In this video, I'm going to talk about what I'm planning to do next year and go over just kind of the changes, my thought process heading in next year. A lot of times when I do these videos, my hope is if you can see what I'm thinking that some of you will be able to relate. And also, I can benefit from you guys when you leave a comment. You can let me know what changes you're making moving into next year. And that is a benefit for me. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. You guys that follow me know that I have a Graham spray rig on the back of my truck I use to spray my lawns with. I would just say this, if you're looking to get a Graham spray rig for next year, you might want to call them now because they're going to get very busy toward the beginning of the year, most likely. They may have some smaller rigs in stock, but if you're looking to have something custom built, you need to get in line so that you're not, uh, not ready for the spring because you didn't call them early enough. So anyway, go to GrahamSE.com or give those guys a call. All right, what are we doing next year, 2023? Uh, I'm filming this toward the end of 2022. I'll, let me say this to start with, 2022 was a great year for me. I spray uh, weed control and fertilization for those of you who knew the channel. I'm a solo operator. I used to mow grass. And a few years ago, I downsized my business and I really focus on optimizing my route for profitability and also just to give me some flexibility for uh, to do YouTube, to be with my family, other things like that. So I've got a list about eight things maybe that we're going to go over that I'm looking as I evaluate next year. So let's get started with that. All right, one thing is, and I don't really talk about marketing a whole lot, um, but I am actually paying, going to start paying for a website SEO type company. So I know a little bit about how to build a website. I mean, I can build a WordPress website. And I know I've learned a little bit to know how to get ranked on Google and all that SEO for those you don't know is search engine optimization, but basically how are you gonna rank in the search engines? Well, my website ranks fairly well right now, but I had a company that I, I got in touch with and they basically, instead of paying thousands of dollars up front to build your website and then paying monthly for your SEO, this company just charges you like a flat monthly fee. And that is what, um, what helps you, you know, they help you get ranked on Google. They help, they build the website for you and everything. So I'm in the build process of the website. So I still have a website, but I'm getting this new website. And again, they're going to start working to improve my rankings. I think locally, I might be number two on Google, uh, the second listing on the first page. So I get a lot of calls on Google already, but I think if I can improve my website, mine was a little outdated and just needed freshened up a little bit. And the website has been my number one way of getting customers that, and then referrals would be, a, a, I guess, a second place. Referrals from people that mow grass and referrals from existing customers. To me, if you're looking to spend money on marketing, having a website SEO is one of the ways that makes sense. So uh, I'm not trying to grow aggressively, but I do want a nice looking website. I do want to continue picking up customers in select neighborhoods. And uh, we'll let you know how it goes with this company before I recommend them. I want to, you know, try them out for myself and see how well it goes. All right. Number two, and this is kind of a broad statement, but I'm just feeling better and better about weed control and fertilization as a business. So uh, it, it just continues to be something that I enjoy doing. It's not for everybody, but I think one of the great things about it is there's just not near as many competitors. And that just makes it so much easier to get business and you have a skill set that is a little bit different than people mowing grass. And I'm, I'm not anti mowing grass by any means, but you've differentiated yourself. So there's not as much competition. You can charge a little bit higher rate. And because there's not as many competitors, I feel like I'm able to get a, a tighter route, which at the end of the day, whatever you're doing in lawn care, mowing or spraying or whatever, to me, the efficiency is very, very important. And so because I can get a lot of customers in the same neighborhood, it allows me to have really efficient, profitable days. So just loving that. Yesterday, um, from the time I'm filming this yesterday, we hosted what we call the Weed Control Workshop. And so I had about, there's probably 20 of us out there. And people came and we had a, a training day. I had some uh, people help me with that. And we taught people that were looking to get into weed control or maybe had just gotten into it. And we worked on spray and we had four different ride on spreader sprayers out there. Uh, one of them is just a spreader, but the other three were spreader sprayers. Riding equipment, spraying, 
show them how to calibrate and just going over lots of stuff about weed control and fertilization. So it was a fun day and just helping others get started into what has been successful for me. The third thing I want to mention, I'm pretty excited about this. And yesterday, a friend of mine, he brought over, uh, I mentioned we had four machines. One of them was the Z-Spray. The Z-Spray Mid. Well, Z-Spray redesigned their machines this uh, going into this 2023 season. And I think I'm getting a Z-Spray um, in the spring. So uh, the Mid one is redesigned. I've been hearing really good things about the redesign as far as uh, how it's holding hills better. Um, to be honest, I, I forget all the upgrades, but that, that one's an important one to me because I live in an area that does have some hills, but especially being able to target some of those larger properties, like I have a, a softball field I take care of, I have a football field I take care of, so I have a warehouse that's, that's really, really big property, and to be able to have that Z-spray to get out there to do both the, the liquid and the grain yard apps is going to be huge, so more to come on that later. I'm real excited about getting the Z-spray. And that kind of goes into my next point, the fourth one. This past year, I I used my ride on machine a little bit more. I was doing a little bit more spraying with it. Um, but I want to continue to do that. Now, I'm still obviously going to be using my Graham Ray. I got it on the back of my truck. A lot of these small yards, you can pull the hose, spray the yard faster, and get the machine off and spray it, in my opinion. But it's going to be great having the ride on for some of the bigger properties. And even with the ride on you, you use your Graham rig, and this is what we talked about this a little bit yesterday, why it's good to have a, a split tank. So I, I can mix the smaller side of the tank for the ride on spreader sprayer and the larger side for the hose off the spray tank. So if it's, I want to use the hose and spray yard, I got that mixed correctly at the right ratio. The, I might have the same exact products in there but a different ratio on the small side of the tank. I could flip the valves and spray it into the Z spray or, or my other ride on uh, sprayer sprayer and spray the yard. So I, I just, I think in using the machines more, and that's one of the things I, I do like about the Z spray, but it's got a hose reel. So one of the tough things is how do you get in those tight spaces? How do you get right up next to the shrubs without getting on the shrubs? Well, I think that hose reel is gonna come in handy for that. So um, anyway, that's up and coming hopefully soon. The fifth thing, and this is something I'm going to be working on very soon, is I've done a lot of work just developing courses and training materials and letters and all that stuff at LawnCareLife.com. I just came out with a new pricing chart that I'm pretty excited about. It's 39 bucks, but it's two different pricing charts, platforms that can be adjusted. Um, but people that want to get into weed control and fertilization just don't know what to charge, it, you know, have a pricing chart to go by. But uh, I want to anchor down even further on these courses and develop more courses, improve the courses I have. So that's something that I'm, I'm gonna continue to do on that. And that's gonna lead into uh, my next point. This will be the sixth point on here. YouTube, let me, let me just make a, a mention on this. Some, sometimes YouTube can be tr tricky. I've been on here for a long time and got over a thousand videos and all that. Appreciate you guys supporting me. There's, there's always a balance in my opinion of like, I'm gonna make this kind of content that I know might get a lot of views, but it might not be that helpful to people. It's just, you know, stuff that gets a lot of views. And then over here, there's something that might be very, very helpful, but it doesn't get that many views. You know, for instance, this video, I'm not sure how many views this video will get. Some people might find it very helpful. Others will be like, I don't need to care about that. I just want to watch something cool or something, you know, more eye candy kind of stuff. Well, I, I guess um, what I'm saying, I, I probably will still kind of walk that line and trying to balance the both of them. But if I had to lean one way, I'm gonna probably lean a little bit more toward the useful content. Because at the end of the day, I, my target audience, it, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of homeowners watch me because they wanna have that great yard. And people watch me, they wanna get out there and mow their grass or whatever. But a lot of people that are starting a, a business or want to get into weed control and fertilization, they watch me. And I wanna help those people. And, you know, ultimately I sell courses, those kind of people and all that. But I, I want to I wanna keep helping people. I think yesterday was reminded that when we had the training day. It's like, you know what? This helped people. I mean, it, it did. I didn't make a whole lot of money off of that training day yesterday. But it, it helped people who are wanting to get into this. And I think I can make videos that are helpful. And again, I'm not saying I might not do a video on how to kill crabgrass that might get 200,000 views or a million views or whatever. And that's great too, but uh, some of them might be like this that are gonna be more directed at somebody that's wanting to start a business. 
A seventh thing I want to mention is something I'm doing just a little bit different in my weed control and fertilization program. So on my zoysia lawns only, and I have a friend that did this last year, but I'm thinking about going to a, a one fertilizer application. So literally just putting out fertilizer in March, but a slow release polymer coated fertilizer. So I buy from Harold's and they have this polyon fertilizer. Well, the, they can put a thicker coat on the fertilizer to make it last longer. And of course you can put out a heavier rate and make it last longer. And the polymer coat uh, coating is, it, the thicker the coat, the, the longer it's gonna last. So I could put it out in March, a more expensive fertilizer, the thicker the coat, also the more expensive. So more expensive application of fertilizer, but at a certain rate, and they have software to graph this for you, but it's gonna literally carry me through the whole growing season on into September to keep the yard looking good. Well, you think, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just fertilize multiple times? Well, one is it's less times to have to handle fertilizer and you're still getting great results. Uh, I think another, it's, it's feeding the lawn at a rate that can be used instead of like, here's some fertilizer, make it really green and it fades out. Here's some more fertilizer, make it really green, fades out. It's like a steady um, feeding of the nitrogen to the lawn. So. Uh, but other, you know, you fertilize one time, yes, more expensive, but you only had to do it one time. And now you can focus more on the weeds. Now, on the Bermuda yards, I'm, I'm using slow release fertilizer as well, but I'm doing it twice. And, uh, but on the zoysias, one of the reasons I'm doing that on the zoysias only is the zoysia lawns, I'm doing grub control in the summer. And I want to be able to, to just get the fertilizer out, get the fertilizer done in March, let it last the whole year, and then boom, I can use the fertilizer, uh, I'm sorry, use the grub control in the summer and uh, just fits with my plan. So that's one thing, I'm a, I'm a small tweak I'm making to my plan moving this next year. I'm also in round one on my Bermuda Zoysia lines, even centipede, I think I'm gonna start using change up round one, very low rate as opposed to a triplet. So another slight uh, reason I'm doing that, I think there's a couple weeds, field matter and oxalis are a couple weeds I see a lot of times in the spring. And I think that change up's gonna do a little bit better job of getting those weeds while also getting the other weeds that felt like the triplet did. And I feel like at the low rate I'm using that and using um, change up maybe methylfuron instead of atrazine and triplet, I feel like the cost is, is virtually the same with a little bit better weed control in my opinion. And the last one I want to say, and I'm going to sort of combine two here, but I, I'm continuing to take on customers, but very selective. You know, I'm not trying to grow huge, but if I have a neighborhood I'm already established, let me, you know, I get a yard in that neighborhood. Yes, I want that yard. You know, if it's on a, a big hillside with multiple grass types and all kind of weeds, that, that might not be one I'm interested in. Or if it's out of the way, it might not be one I'm interested in. So it's going to be selective growth. And that goes along with the other thing that maybe the most important is trying to enjoy the lawn business. You know, it, I think it's a great business, but there's so many people that just get burnt out on it, get worn out. And since I've downsized, I try to just have really profitable days, but leave myself some flexibility, be with family, do other things I like to do, do YouTube videos. And I think it's increased my enjoyment of it and I don't get burnt out. And, and I don't want to lose that to, for the sake of making a little bit more money, you know? So I want to, continue to try to, to fight that battle and, and win and not just get so swamped in it and say yes to everything. So I'm, I'm trying to continue saying no. Uh, I mentioned things like pricing charts and um, courses. If you, We Control Fertilization Academy is probably my, my premier product. A lot of people take advantage of that. If you want to get into Weed Control Fertilization, there's a lot of business master academy. That's for people that want to get into mowing. There's the documents, like if you want programs of what to spray on Bermuda, Zoysia, Centipede, saying I've seen all these, uh, mostly warm season, but um, all these letters, documents I use to communicate with customers, that stuff's all at uh, LawnCareLife.com, so you can check that out. Thanks for watching. Let me hear from you in the comments, and I'm going to look forward to warmer weather, green grass, things like that, where we can get back out and start doing some more action videos and not just talking about stuff, though these might be helpful as well. We'll see you in the next video.